Back in 2016, Razer released the very first Razer Core, an external GPU that you can use to boost the performance of your laptop. Now, at the time, it was limited to two PCI Express lanes, and almost all of the laptops out there that were Ultrabooks were running dual-core processors. Now, it, the game has changed. We have quad-core processors. We have ability to use up to four PCI Express lanes through USB-C, and the GPUs have also gotten more powerful. But, back when I first tried this myself and I purchased the, the unit and the laptop, I was on the dual-core model and I had some serious issues with consistency in frame rates for game performance, particularly with games that were high demanding, high frame rate. So I walked away from that and I ended up going with a Razer laptop, the Blade 15, which was under five pounds and had a really nice 1070 GPU in there. Well, here we are. The, the landscape has changed a little bit and in both the, the ability for laptops to perform well and stay cooled and also be lightweight, but also the eGPU game has changed a little bit as well. So I asked Razer to hook me up with whatever they could and this is what they sent me. I've got the brand new or most recently released eGPU, the Razer Core X. I've got a quad core Razer Blade Stealth. This is not the latest version, it's just a year old, but it does have the, uh, the quad core processor which is the key to this experiment. And um, they put a GPU in there for me too, a GTX 1080. Now I know it's the 10 series, so what the heck, why aren't I using an RTX 20 series? This is good enough for this experiment. The whole idea here is to figure out, does this whole thing really work? Is it feasible? And then of course, we had to talk about the price and compare all of this to modern gaming laptops in the 15 inch space. All right, so I'm gonna test these out and play some Doom and some other games, see how they perform, and yeah, catch up with you in a bit. This is how easy it is to work with the Core X. You simply pull the handle in the back. Now you have access to your GPU. If you want to, you can completely remove what I'll call the innards and start getting to work. It's really a simple but elegant solution. You have a PCI Express 16 slot for your GPU. This is a full 1080. And a, P and a power supply that's dedicated to the GPU but also routes power to your laptop so you can do it, you can uh, power it. And a fan, keep everything cool. And if your GPU requires another eight pins, you have eight pins right here that you can use. It's a very simple solution, it's very easy to use. And if anything goes wrong with your GPU, you just pop in another one. Or if you decide that you want something more powerful, you just pop it in. When choosing between an eGPU setup with an Ultrabook or a dedicated gaming laptop, it really comes down to the following pros and cons. A gaming laptop is going to get you about five hours of battery life if you baby it and you pay for something that's really well crafted like a razor blade. And you're going to have good gaming performance. Not phenomenal because this is not a desktop, but it's going to be pretty good. It's probably going to be on par with what you'd find with a 1080 or a 2070 GPU plugged into an eGPU that's then routed to an Ultrabook. The Ultrabook Pros is better battery life, probably 7 to 10 hours depending on which one you get. And it's going to be way more portable because an Ultrabook will weigh under 3 pounds. It's part of the specifications for being an Ultrabook. But the CPU itself will have less power 
than what you find in a gaming laptop because it's, they're more difficult to cool and because of that ultrabook specification it has to have a tdw of around 15. so the eGPU setup also is more expensive than just going for a dedicated laptop the gaming laptops are around two thousand bucks you've probably seen a million videos by now showing you which ones are great and which ones are so so and how they're priced you definitely get what you pay for in this realm whereas the ultrabook it's also going to be kind of expensive, you know, fifteen hundred bucks versus two thousand. Then you have to buy the GPU for around four to six hundred dollars, and then the eGPU chassis for three hundred bucks. In this case, in the Razer Core X, which is the best one out there, in my opinion. So there's there's a lot to consider here. Now, price is not the only barometer. There's also you have to consider the functionality and your lifestyle. If you're somebody who doesn't have a lot of space in where you live or where you work or game. Just having a dedicated gaming laptop, man, that's not a bad way to go because you got your display right here. If you're someone who wants to play on a larger display and you are you really need that battery life, the eGPU setup makes a ton of sense. You come home, you plug it in, one cable goes directly to your laptop, and now you have power all the time, plus Ethernet, additional accessories over USB, and, of course, the power of a desktop GPU with a little bit of throttling, <laughs> um, but enough to get you good performance. And as you saw in the videos, The Witcher 3, Doom Eternal, Resident Evil 7, they all ran really, really well. Now, not desktop class, but they ran well enough for this setup. So I'm hopeful that this is helpful to you, and if you have questions, please let me know. Hit me up in the comments, and I still have this equipment for a little bit of time so I can do some additional testing for you. Thanks.